so first off, I just want to have you guys introduce yourselves in your creative careers. <laughs> okay, I, I could go first. Um, my name is Laura Hyunji Kim, and um, I am a multimedia artist, primarily working with performance, body-centered performances, and uh, produce um, video, new media, digital art, um, and thematically, I like to explore um, human and non-human interactions with digital technologies and um, the kind of uh, what I like to call philosophical, so feely emotional aspects um, of our lives that get lost or that are hard to render through digital, um, the digital medium. And um, yeah, that's, that's me. And I'm uh, Kevin Sweet, uh, so I'm a media artist and uh, educator. Um, and yeah, I, I, I typically work in, um, so mostly it's been uh, virtual reality, uh, um, sort of performance work, uh, video, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm really interested in ideas of play and playfulness and how play and playfulness can help people sort of change their relationship to uh, either the histories or societies or cultures that they've been born into. Very nice. It's great to meet both of you. Um, so Kevin, how has COVID-19 affected your life and livelihood? Um, for me, uh, since I'm a, a PhD candidate at uh, University of Colorado, Boulder, um, so it's been uh, a rather rapid transition to online teaching, which is, uh, it's something. <laughs> um, you know, basically everybody, uh, on one hand, it becomes more difficult uh, to teach and to do things, particularly if you're interested in more social practice oriented art. Um, so working with people within public spaces, but at the same time, when you have um, a lot of people who are sharing um, sort of a broader experience of, of the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I've seen um, and had people also contribute, you know, to my life. I've seen people sort of just really rise to the occasion in a lot of ways and help one another out in ways that um, I didn't necessarily expect uh, to be, um, you know, done virtually. It's, it's been really kind of great in that way. It's shown, I think, a lot of people's uh, really, you know, their, their generosity, empathy, compassion, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of the silver lining of this messed up situation, huh? Um, how about how about you, Laura? How has COVID nineteen affected your life and livelihood? Yeah, um, I was teaching a digital art class at CU Boulder, um, and so for me too, it was rapidly transitioning into remote teaching, and also um, you know, also tending to a lot of the various um, emotional, you know, resonance that the students are feeling and I were feeling, I was feeling at the same time and, and a lot of kind of this kind of rapid transition to uh, care and remote care, which I thought was a very interesting um, aspect of what happened. Um, and alongside like professionally, like I was supposed to travel to different places for conferences, um, to showcase new work, um, and all of those things have, were canceled. And, um, for me, like being able to be in like a venue or attend an event in person is always about connecting and meeting more people. And so, um, having those opportunities, um, stunted in a way was, uh, was, was tricky um, because you know you prepare you're ready to go and um, suddenly everything is shifting and um, my folks are in Korea and so they were hit first and um, seeing what they were going through so I feel like I've been in this mental space for the past since January <laughs> um, and uh, seeing it kind of spread everywhere like just the the uncertainty the the kind of just emotional like kind of uncertainty that everybody shares um was also as kevin said was also kind of a space for um being more empathetic but also how do you do it when you can't be in touch with other people 
physically, you know, but also um, realizing that, you know, physical distancing is not social distancing nowadays, we're still able to talk to each other. And how do you, yeah, really like care for some buddy um, during this time when um, it's just difficult. And that was a very tangential way of talking about how COVID-19 affected me. But um, yeah, it, it just, it just brought a lot of people who um, closer to me. Um, and yeah. Yeah very strange. Um, so you've obviously been awarded a COVID-19 work project stipend. Would you mind just briefly telling me about the project and how it can support connectivity in your neighborhood? Sure. So um, on the more practical terms, uh, what we're doing is we're producing these uh, little custom uh, seed packets. Okay. And we are in uh, they contain sort of a, a small uh, amount of seeds, um, a little card with directions that will send you to our um, sort of centralized website, which is seedseekers.co. And we are going around um, uh, certain areas within the 80302 zip code and hiding them just like you would if you were geocaching uh, and dropping a pin um, on an interactive map on our site so that people can go and they can actually look for these uh, seeds or just happen across them by accident. Um, the, the, the little thrill of discovery is really sort of a, an exciting part of this for us. Um, and yeah, open it up. My, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Space for uh, <laughs> for uh, those who have found these seed packets to be able to, um, as like a um, a platform or a space, a creative space um, that could lead to conversations and storytelling um, when, uh, yeah, when everything is so individual, like, and so, uh, so having um, whoever picks up the seed packet can also come back to our website and connect with other people um, by sharing their images, sharing their stories of what they're doing. So in a way it's becoming like, it, it will become hopefully like a archive for um, now and like the moment of time when it's so hard to trust one another, like, or even trust anything that's outside that, um, that you, uh, that's unknown. Like you don't know who touched that before. So, um, yeah. So bringing those kind of conversations and yeah, it's a very specific moment that we're responding to, um, as part of the project and hopefully, um, building a micro community, um, by having everybody have a shared experience of growing a plant together. Yeah, that's such a wonderful project idea. Um, I'm just curious, have you guys seen many people posting, um, their experience with the seed packets or, um, is that sort of like a later phase? Well, that's, that's a, a later phase as the packets haven't been dropped yet. Um, but, uh, that'll be, uh, in, you know, sort of across the month of June, probably starting in the, the first or second week. Uh, and then these seeds take, um, I believe it was, uh, eight to six to eight days or eight to 10 days for germination. Yeah. For, yeah, for germination. And then I think it's a full 80 days for harvest. So while there's this initial push to get these, these sort of seeds out there and have people discover them, um, uh, over time, the hopefully the community will build over a much longer period of time. It's because you know, sixty to eighty days uh, is quite a long time when we're kind of limiting our interactions with one another uh, over to be over Zoom or or oftentimes we're sort of staying at home. Uh, so this gives you know, in my mind, it gives it gives something uh, particularly for younger people. Uh, children, that kind of thing, who might find this particularly exciting. It also becomes a context for learning, which I'm very excited about. But um, it gives people something to to look forward to every single day, to notice the change, to notice the growth, to notice the development, and also to see, um, I hope, uh, to see what other people are, are doing with their plants as well. Um, so that it's not just uh, sort of um, helping to get people within the community that already exists out um, in a safe way uh, into the, the sort of the city around them uh, in the sense where they're able to share an experience but not actually be physically together. Uh, but it also creates a new 
community within that. Um, and I think that's, you know, we all need to look for more ways to connect with one another. And this yeah. is uh, one way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's great. I love how it's an individual activity that can simultaneously be creating community. Um, yeah. yeah, that's really, it's beautiful. Um, so is there, is there anything else you guys would like to share about the project or your experience so far? Yeah, I, um, I'm really excited to just start actually like dropping them around <laughs> and uh, see what happens. And it's, it's also, um, we, we were talking about community in a very general sense, but it's, uh, I think I mentioned earlier too, it's like, our, like I felt stronger with my community, but it's harder to, to get to know expand that just because of the place we're in and um kind of how do we you know in, how, how would this piece really like interact with strangers how would it work with those who i don't know yet and have yet to know of and um that kind of uh togetherness i think is really um what's really attractive for me with this project and how um there's something that changes good and we're going through change together that is just, um, hopefully that will lead to more positive change in the future. But um, it's it's a hard time and um, and also recognizing and noticing that change is always hard, um, but not something to be afraid of. Hopefully by introducing these packets that have little, little quirky bits that uh, could not distract you, but um, can help you kind of reevaluate and um, center yourself uh, a little bit more, and yeah, just having something to look to look forward to is also um, is kind of like a way of uh, building hope, I think, too. And um, yeah, great, that's wonderful. Um, all right, well, thank you so much. <laughs>